Uh, I appreciate the efforts by the MOM uh, to address PMAC concerns. And that said, I would like to clarify if Minister Teo believes that simply slowing down the rate of EP and S pass holders is sufficient uh, to ensure that local PMETs do not get displaced. I say this in part because uh, this strategy, while it's a very blunt strategy, uh, and for starters, uh, we, we need to take into account base effects. So let me explain. Even if the rate of issuance has slowed, as Minister Teo has shared, it's misleading to actually compare the two. Uh, so for instance, a 20% increase from 50 people, for example, uh, is 10 people, but a 10% increase from 200 people is in fact uh, an increase of 20 people, which is larger in absolute terms. Now I understand that 35,000 people is larger than 9,000, but the point is that the slowdown uh, in the rate of EP and S pass issuance is less dramatic than Minister Teo claims. Uh, moreover, we should be aware that um, of the effect of diminishing returns, by which I mean many PMETs uh, may already have secured foreign, foreign talent. Uh, m m many PMET positions may already have been secured by foreign talent. And so it's no surprise that the number that is now required actually goes down. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I merely stated the facts. I did not say that one contributed. I did not say that one contributed to the other. I stated the facts. This is what they were. The facts are what they are. But I thought that I should perhaps address Dr. James Lim's other question. Are we satisfied with slowing down the rate of growth of EP and S pass holders? The perspective that I'd like to share is this. Ultimately, we have to ask ourselves, what does it take to help Singaporeans stay in employment, stay out of unemployment, and over time to achieve income growth, to achieve retirement adequacy? Those are the four things that MOM is always looking at. Then we ask ourselves, what is the best way to achieve these outcomes. If we can do so without adding to the number of EP as pass holders, for that matter, if we can do so, continue to deliver good outcomes, help Singaporeans enjoy high employment, low unemployment, income growth, and retirement adequacy without using more foreigners as complements to our workforce, if we can reduce the reliance on unproductive, manpower-intensive methods of work in some of our business sectors today, if we can groom more Singaporeans to take up the good jobs that we are creating, then of course the answer is yes. But the important thing really is, what does it take to deliver and bring about these good outcomes for Singaporeans. And then we ask ourselves, within the options that are available to us as a tiny red dot, how can we mitigate the difficulties, the shortcomings, and the worries that people have, legitimate worries that people have about a very sizable foreign workforce. We are aligned in that regard. I don't think that the destination that we want to head towards is a different one. But we have to ask ourselves, looking at the opportunities as well as the constraints we have as a tiny city state, which Mr. Leong Man Wai reminds us we are a tiny city state. We are not a tiny city. And a tiny city state has got its opportunities, but it also has its constraints. Within those constraints, what is the best way to help Singaporeans move forward? That has to be the answer, and not some predetermined ideas about what you bring it down to. Yeah. Supposing we can bring it down to zero or even negative, which is what has happened. The first seven months of this year, I reported to members 
that the first seven months of this year, total number of EP and S pass holders have gone down by 22,000. That's what it is. Suppose we can bring it down to a different number and so on. But at the same time, the job opportunities for Singaporeans have shrunk. Your children, my children one day coming to us and say, Mom, Dad, sorry, you know, can't find a decent job in Singapore anymore. And they really no longer have that opportunity of the six in ten jobs that we talked about, which many countries have found themselves in, similar, in, in that sort of a situation. Is that going to be better for us? Well, we'll have to think very hard about whether the answer is yes. Thank you.